And the message that I have here today is don't lose it, all right? So what I'm talking about is passion because I just feel like there's a lot of people that are losing their passion or have lost their passion. And I want you to come back. I want you to listen to what the Lord has in store for each and every one of you. I was, I was going to preach something else and I was like at one in the morning and I was still studying at one in the morning sitting at my table and I, I got up this morning and that's not what the Lord had given me, I, you know, because I didn't really want to talk about passion because I just didn't have the passion to preach about passion. And um, <laughs> isn't that crazy? I said, nah, not passion. Let's talk about something else. And I got up this morning and I just kept on hearing passion, passion. And I said, okay, so I got up, I walked right through the kitchen and I saw all my notes there. The laptop was there and I just left everything there. So I got here to the church and I said, okay, let me begin to see what the Lord has. So just this morning, a little while ago, uh, the word that everybody had, God had already gave me, it just confirmation. So uh, if you can join me in the book of Revelation, please. All right. That song that they spray, what was it called? Spirit. Oceans. Last night, I don't know if you watched the fight last night. And... Garcia and Davis and and Garcia came out to that song and it was it, I heard just the background and, and I caught my attention I said oh is that Amy Amy singing that song for for Garcia and then and I didn't know it was that song and then that song came about and I was like pretty cool how you and, and, and millions of people can hear uh, you know just a, a worship a word from the Lord and it's a blessing so praise God for God being everywhere, no matter what. Amen. All right, so the book of Revelation chapter 2 is where I'm going to be at. And I want you to join me starting in verse 2. When you're there, please say amen. All right, here we go. The word of God reads, it says, I know your works. Okay, let God speak to each and every one of you. I know your works. I know your labors and your patience and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles but are not and have found them to be liars you have endured and have been patient and for my name's sake have labored and have not grown weary so far so good but I have something against you that you have abandoned the love you had at first remember therefore from where you have fallen repent and do the works you did at first or else I will come to you quickly and remove your candlestick, your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, you hate the works of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. And Father, I pray that you anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me, Lord. And I ask you these things in Jesus' name and everyone say, Amen, Amen. You may have a seat. Praise God. I know your works. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he knows your works. That's right. God knows each and every person in this room. He knows how you're feeling right now. He knows um, what's going to happen to you tomorrow and the following week. And such a blessing to know that God knows us so well. And he says, I know your works. Jesus, he looked at his church and he knew its condition. And, and it's very important to, to preach this message because I want God to look at our church and know our condition as well. And, and as we're moving forward and doing great things for the Lord, like revivals and so forth, <clears throat> we are in a big old hit list of the enemy because as, the more you do for the Lord, the more you become this target to the enemy. And LCM is on the move, amen? Last Chance Ministries just don't know when to stop. But it's because we have a lot of men, a lot of women that been through some hell and high waters that they just don't want to sit down. They just don't want to be in the back anymore. They want to do something for the kingdom of God because God has been so good to them. And here we have this church that God knows uh, the, the church of Ephesians. God knows their condition. And everyone else... This was a solid, solid church. It was just not any church. This was a solid church. They actually really, really worked hard. I mean, you saw everything that 
that the Lord was saying about the church. They worked hard. They, they had patience and uh, they continued with endurance and perseverance and they kept on doing a lot of things. But, but the outward appearance, like if you, if you walk into the church, it looks like, man, this is a good church. They're doing all kinds of outreach. They're moving. They're, they, they look happy and they're loving on people. So it's a solid church. If you will walk into the church of Ephesians, you would think that it's okay. And maybe that's why I didn't want to preach about this today because I felt like the church is okay. But the Lord says different that it's not okay. And we need to be here and we need to hear what the Lord has to say. Because I believe there's some people in this house that you really have lost your passion. That what you prayed for, now you're complaining about. What you asked God for, now you're stepping away from it. And God brought you here today to hear this word that you can run but you can't hide. Hallelujah. And I'm excited to preach this word here today. Um, so here we go. And it goes on to say, uh, I know all these things about you. You're a solid church. You're a hardworking church. You have patience. Nevertheless, somebody say nevertheless. Now nevertheless means, means despite all that, all that good stuff that you have done, I have one thing against you. And this is it. That you have left your first love. And a lot of people are here today. You have left your first love. And I just explained to it things that you prayed for things that you love. I love, I love this. I love doing this for the kingdom of God. It's all for the glory of God. And all of a sudden, things, things are not like that anymore. Can we be honest? Has anyone ever lost just the passion? Amen. I'm serious. Just, it's just being honest. You lost the passion. That, and, and we're going to go into that on how people lose their passion or what happened uh, that you just left your first love. And it's not like you, you lost your passion but you left your passion. Not that you lost your love because God is love, but you left the love. So sometimes it gets dark in our lives is because we left the light. You understand what I'm saying? So I want to make sure that you understand where we're going with this. It's a nevertheless, which means despite all that, all the good stuff, I have one thing against you, and it's that you have left your first love. And many people are here today. They are actually doing lots of things Lots of great things for the church. Nevertheless, they lost their passion. Somebody say this, don't lose it, all right? Don't lose it. You, you have to hold on to it. If you, if, you, if you lose your passion, you lose your position, amen? If you lose your passion, you lose your position. If you don't want him, someone else is going to want him. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, let them have him. Anyways, but... <laughs> Uh, some of you just lost that. You look at her and like, nah, nah, same old cracker. Manna. What is this? Nah, you married her. We pray that God will give you like that love once again and you get, get back to it. And some of you love working with children and love working in the outreach or just love your work or you loved whatever the passion was that you man, I've been praying for this. And all of a sudden you just lose it and you just don't have it anymore and this is where where we're at if you lose it if you lose your passion you lose your position all right so don't lose your your passion and don't lose your your position the you the Ephesus church the church that we're talking about here they have left but they have not lost but they have left their first love and that's not good when you leave your first love now church have you left what you used to love and just think about that have you left what you used to love? At one time, you had all this love for it, and all of a sudden, you just don't feel nothing anymore, and it's just not there anymore. This is, this is something very familiar that I know about this, this person in the Bible, and I teach this all the time, and this is a man that has so much passion to see things uh, to where they should be. Came back to what once, once was left, and when he came back, he saw it all messed up. Uh, and, and saw it all uh, torn, torn down and that's Nehemiah so I want to put that in the scripture real quick on the screen if we can I think we have it and it's in, in Nehemiah chapter 4 and I'm going to just read a few scriptures and then I'm going to move on amen so it says this when Sambalat heard that we were rebuilding the wall he became angry and was greatly irritated and he mocked the Jews watch this he spoke before his relatives in the army of Samaria and said, what are these people, the Jews, doing? 
Like, what is, what are you doing? What is, well, now you're going to Bible study. Okay, just think about, it. now you're serving in the children's ministry. What are these people doing? Are, are they fortifying themselves? Will they make sacrifices? Can they revive the burn up stones out of the rubbish heaps? And it goes on to say in verse 3, now, Tobias and the Ammonite was beside him. And he said, even what they are rebuilding, even if a fox climbed in it, the work would break down the stones and the walls. Hear, O oh, our God, that we are despised. Turn the reproach back upon their own heads and give them as spoil in a land of captivity. I'm almost done. Number five, no longer cover their inequities nor blot out their sin which is before you since they have made insults against the builders. Is that why we have? Verse six, so we rebuilt the wall until all of it was solidified up to half its height. The people had a passion for the work. All right, here we go. You're with me? Stay with me. Nehemiah had a passion to rebuild what was already torn down. And when he began to move, that's when it all started. As soon as you begin to move, that's when it starts. The devil doesn't care if you're just sitting down. As long as you're sitting down, he won't mess with you. But as soon as you take a step forward, as soon as you stepped into this building, the devil, you got his attention because you should have never stepped in here today. But praise God that you got up this morning and you came to the house of the Lord. Now worship him like you never worshiped him before because you're already in this house. Hallelujah. Now don't lose that passion of getting up in the mornings and coming and, and praising the name of Jesus because that's what God wants. He wants you to have that passion. Man, I, I can't wait to go to church. Anyone excited like that? Can't wait. Uh, and, and we want you to keep on having that passion. And that's when it all starts, when you get up, when you start moving. Now Satan tactics, if you're taking notes, are very slick. Now, he won't mess with someone who is just not doing anything, just not moving. He'll just stay there. Have you noticed that as soon as you say yes to Jesus and you give life to Christ, now all hell breaks loose? Anyone? Can I get a witness? Amen. It's so true, man. It's so true. Now, so, mm, all right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Nobody move. Nobody get hurt. All right. The first tactics of the enemy is getting people to move. <laughs> just play. All right. The first tactic is he uses on Nehemiah was to ridicule him. Words can hurt people. Yes or no? When someone tells you something, has anyone ever told you something that it kind of like hits you in the back, ah, in the nerve, and, and all of a sudden you just, you look at that person and you just hard to swallow. I mean, I just, it takes days before you can even forget about it because words will tear you up. You remember when I told you when I went to the coast and someone told me, what are you doing? And before I even said anything, he goes, shh, 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 shut up. Were y'all here when I shared that story? I won't share it again. But man, that kind of upset me, but I didn't say nothing. I kind of shut up. And then I went upstairs and I told my wife, and my wife's like, you're going to let him punk you like that? And I told my wife, settle down. <sighs> you're a Christian woman. And then she goes, I can't believe you didn't say nothing. Like, shh. Uh, then I told her Shh. so I can feel better so anyways words can hurt you and this is where Nehemiah gets ridiculed and those words really can take can we, can we Josh can we go like to the keyboard or something or change the beat or something I, don't, I want something different like let's something different just I want a, a different beat or something like yeah, let's just, I'm sorry, Josh. Um, okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, we got people still coming in. Praise God, man. Just keep it coming, keep it coming. Hmm. So as soon as, as soon as Sambalan, Sambalan and Tobias are individuals that are hired to discourage Nehemiah. 
And I'm not going to go too much into the story, but you got people that the enemy will hire to go and discourage you, to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. And all of a sudden, those words will hurt you, or those words will penetrate deep into your heart, that it will mess with your mind, and then you begin to say, you know what, maybe this is not for me. But if God called you, God will sustain you, and it is for you. Just don't let no devil in hell discourage you with the words that come out of their mouth. Has anyone ever been discouraged because what somebody else said? And the thing is, is they're going on and you're the one stuck, discouraged, complaining when you should just enjoy what God gave you. What God gave you, no matter what she says or he says, no man can take away what God has called you to do. You got to stay in the faith and stay focused in the name of Jesus. And here is some ballast and they start really ridiculing him and he becomes very angry. He becomes angry because Nehemiah decided to have a passion to rebuild. So you got people that are mad at you because you keep on waking up wanting to praise God. Not everybody is happy that you're here today. There are some people within your own family that are discouraging you because you're here and this is not your religion. This is not where you belong. You're at church too much. You're never here. You're always over there praising the hallelujah. Listen, if you only knew what the Lord has done in my life, that's why I'm always at the feet of Jesus. That's why I'm always praising God because God's been good to me. I can't hear those words. Those words are not going to penetrate my heart. I'm busy doing what my father called me to do. And those are the things that you have to understand. The words can destroy an individual. They said that the tongue has power. It can, it can edify you. It can lift you up or it can tear you down. And sometimes we got people that will tear you down. And if you allow those words to come into your heart, you will get discouraged and you will lose your passion. And it says that some Zimbabwe and Tobias, they got angry because they heard that Nehemiah was going to rebuild what was torn down. And last chance ministries, we talked about we got the keys that God's going to bring it all together with the ingredients and revival number seven and revival number eight. Revival number eight means that there's a new beginning. Hallelujah. And when there's a new beginning, the devil can't stand new beginnings. But there's some people in here that you're about to get a fresh start, a new beginning. Things are about to turn around. Hallelujah. You're going to go from last to first because God has seen your passion. For those that have lost your passion, you better get it back in the name of Jesus before you lose it. Don't lose it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And it says that Sambalat and Tobias begin to mock him. They begin to mock him. You saw what it says. Man, even if, uh, even when he, if he's done, can they complete it? Can they finish? How long is he going to be at church? Uh, he went to a retreat, but I'm pretty sure in about a month he'll be right back. And all of a sudden you start hearing these things and it starts messing with your mind. I told Brad, where's Brad? I told Brad, I told Brad, Brad, remember, you want to get to the point where you have the, you have the anointing of ease. That no matter what people say, it just, it hits you, but it, it just falls right off of you. It don't even, it don't even, it don't even penetrate in the inside. It comes at you, but it falls right off because I'm too blessed to be stressed and I'm too anointed to be disappointed and I'm not where I used to be and I'm not who I used to be. I'm a new creation, hallelujah. And I serve a God that is for me, not against me. So you can say what you want to say, but I'm not going to lose it. I'm going to keep on holding on tight to the hand of God because God is on my side. Come on, somebody say, God is on my side. Yes, he is. Don't lose that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And church, these words can really, really, really discourage people. And here comes Tobias. Even if they complete it, like even if you continue to move, if a fox comes in, if any little thing comes in, it'll just fall down because it's not strong. That's why you have to really be strong. Like, like when they say Bible study or when they have church on Wednesdays and Sunday, man, we're, we're open all the time. Rallies, like we're always busy. Why? Because we need that strength. Not everybody, not everybody will show up in a, play, in a time like this or not everybody will just uh, go to Bible study and then come Wednesday and then come Thursday and then do Saturday. Like, this is like a rare breed right here, man. I'm serious. We're like a rare breed. It gets to the point where you, you kind of like, man, man, I'm always at the church. Like, you, this is your second home from home. Amen. 
And, and, and I want to let you know something that Tobias and some ballads was individuals that came together to discourage Nehemiah. And often negative people, they tend to come together and begin with rumors which creates all these crazy things. You ever met somebody negative? And then you look at the person next to them, just like her. And then you look at the person next to her, just like, they all hang together, bunch of comadres. I'm serious. And you look at them and say, oh, they all get along because they're all negative because they all talk about the same thing. You got to separate yourself from that negative individual and get yourself somebody that is positive, that's going to hold on to it. So don't lose it because of who you're hanging around with. And if you hang around with them long enough, you begin to talk like them as well. And you begin to act like them as well. And all of a sudden, you feel the way they feel and they think the way they think. And they're out. And because they're out, you feel like you should be out too. You're not here for them. You run your own race. Finish your own race. God called you, not them. And some people are losing it because of somebody else. Some of you are losing your passion, your position, your, 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 this, this thing that God has given you. You're losing it because of someone else. Why would you do that? They're not the ones that wake you up in the morning. Jesus is the one that wakes you up in the morning. He's the one that made a way for you. They will leave you in a heartbeat. My God, he will never leave you or forsake you. You got to hold on to the truth of God. Hallelujah. And all of a sudden, when, when the negative people come together and they begin rumors, which creates resistance to what the Lord wants them to do. And that's when the resistance comes in. That's why when you surround yourself with, with negative individuals, you will eventually become like one of them. The false rumors feed on the people's fear. And that's true because it feeds on the people and all of a sudden they start, they start thinking like, man, maybe it is true. I mean, or maybe it is, and, a, and, a, and a great leader, a true leader, doesn't believe in any kind of rumors. They say, okay, you say what you want to say, but I know what I know. And you can do what you want to do, but I'm going to do what I have to do. Because you ain't going where I'm going, and I ain't going where you're going. I love you, but I'm going over here, and you stay over there. But I'm not going to sit here and just have a bunch of rumors and negativity and have that attitude because I'm not about to lose it. I'm not going to be like the five unwise virgins where I have no oil. When Jesus comes, I want to be ready in position. I don't want to lose my position. I want to stay in position. And because of you, I might lose it. So don't, don't lose it for nobody else. Amen. When one is working hard and discovers that is being bombarded by ridicule, rumors, and resistance, it is natural, watch this, to start feeling discouraged. And discouragement is both the intention and the consequence of opposition. So if I would ask you, how do you handle oppositions? How do you handle when things like this come against you? Do you get angry? Any angry people in this house? Oh, come on, you can be honest. Anybody here have like an anger problem? They can't tell you nothing because you... Mm. Okay, this is what happens when you start getting ridiculed or someone tells you something. You always have to have the last word. You don't shut up. You have to uh, be quiet. Okay, no, don't even say okay. All right, don't say all right. Just be quiet. Okay. You have to have the last word. No. Just... And then all of a sudden you get angry. Just, just be quiet and walk away and, and that's it that's for angry people all right amen so i'm going to give you four things real quick four main causes for people to feel discouraged you ready here we go number one is fatigue fatigue a body that is tired may cause the spirit to feel exhausted and discouraged when you're tired you're exhausted I always tell people when we're in an event, when you're tired, man, just move out of the way. Because all of a sudden, after that, it's going to come negativity. And after that, you're going to start complaining. And you don't want to lose your position. So if you're tired, might as well just, just sit back a little bit, take a deep breath, but get right back at it. And say, man, I'm not going to let this tired. I will not grow weary. God will give me strength in the name of Jesus. Because God says, I will give you strength. Come to me, all who, have, who are heavy laden and, and weary, and I will give you strength in the name of Jesus. In Matthew 11, verse 28, it says that, Come to me all who are labor, who labor 
and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. We're taking notes. So fatigue, the next one is frustration. Anyone here ever get frustrated? Anyone ever get frustrated with someone else? They frustrate you? Or you're driving and you want to road rage? Any road ragers in this house? <laughs> See, when we're working on a project that is so big as the Nehemiah, frustration is generally an issue with how we perceive things. Although, watch this, the clutter was decreasing. Many were focusing on the ruins instead of focusing on the goal of getting the job done. And there's a lot of people that are focusing on the ruins instead of focusing on the goals. So because you focus on everything else, you lose focus on the true goal. I was in the bathroom and I was thinking about something else. Uh, I won't tell you what I was thinking about, but I was thinking about something else. But I had to shake it off quick because I'm about to come and preach. And I had to refocus. I had to look at myself in the mirror and said, ah, okay, focus. Because that little thing that goes through your mind, that's, that's the enemy. Because everything I preach, I'm going to go through it. So the devil doesn't want me to come up here and preach a word. So he'll tell me to turn around and tell Josh, can you go somewhere else? It's not Josh. It's the enemy trying to mess with my mind. Because there's some people in the house that you're about to get your passion back. And the devil doesn't want you to get nothing back. There's some people in the house that you're about to lose it. But God brought me here to tell you, hold on tight. Don't lose it. Hold your position. You're at the right place at the right time. And God is about to do something, yeah, in your life if you hold on to it. Hallelujah. And that's where the confusion comes in. And all of a sudden, if I allow that to come into my mind, I can get discouraged. I can lose focus. And all of a sudden, I'm preaching what I want to preach. That's what you call a, a hitman pastor. I know a lot of those hitman pastors, those, 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 uh, those pastors that they know who's in the house, so they preach because they know who's in the house. And that's not a good pastor. When you preach what the Holy Ghost wants you to preach, then that's the Holy Ghost. That's Jesus. That's why I always say, anoint my lips and let it be you speaking through me. So if y'all have a problem with me, you got to take it up with Jesus because Jesus is in the house and he's speaking here today. Hallelujah. Praise God. So fatigue and then frustration kicks in and then failure kicks in. So fatigue, frustration, and failure. When you are tired or fatigued, Everything seems impossible. And all of a sudden you say, man, I just, just no way I can come back. I, I'm already so far too deep. Or I lied so much that I dug a hole I can't cut off. You got to understand that when you get frustrated, when you get fatigued and tired, you, you, start, you start feeling like a failure. And say, man, I let everybody down. I let God down. Have you ever said that? I let God down. And I want you to tell you something that you could never let God down because he's too big to be holy enough to begin with. It's him that has held you up with his victorious hands in the name of Jesus. So don't ever feel like a failure that I let God down. No, if you're awake here today, it's because God believes in you and he just wants you to get that fire back. He wants you to, he brought you in here like the last time and he just wants to flame that fire because some of you, your fire was about out but God brought you here right on time to just fan that fire in the name of Jesus so it can ignite once again and have that passion and the love for the things of the Lord never to re never to forget what the Lord has done for you some people forget when God came into your life and he rescued you does anybody remember that day I celebrate that day all the time December 2nd 2005 y'all hear me talk about that all the time some of you forgot when you got saved you can't forget when you gave your life to Jesus. And when you get to the point where you don't worship God the way you should worship God, you should pray to God and say, God, give me that desire back because I don't have it. And be honest because he knows it all. Or Father God, I just don't feel it. And God says, I know. But I want to. And God says, I'll give it to you. The desires of your heart. When I gave my life to Jesus and I couldn't stop crying, I had that passion for the Lord to do so many things for the kingdom of God. And I still got the same passion for God. But things get tougher and things come your way and all kinds of frustration kicks in and fatigue comes in and tiredness comes in where you want to just throw in the towel and just yell and say, I'm done. But God said, man, you're not done yet. It's, you haven't seen nothing yet. You don't even know what I got coming for you. I got 
doors that I am about to open that the devil doesn't want you to step into. Why do you think you're going through all that ridicule and all that confusion and all that hurt and all that pain? It's because the devil doesn't want you to experience what I have for you over here. But if you hold on, if you hold on and don't lose it, I will take you places that you never, ever, ever been before. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord has in store for you. The Lord has something amazing for each and every one of us. And the devil doesn't want you to be happy. He don't want you to rejoice. He don't want your marriage to work out. He don't want your children to be here. He don't want your husband worshiping. He wants your house all jacked up, torn up from the floor up. But I dare you to stand and tell the devil, you are under my feet. No weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper. Come on, somebody praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha! The next one, the next one, number four, is fear. Fear is one of the strategies of the enemy that he uses. And he'll, he'll promote this fear against you. And that's the strategy that he will use. The enemy has two goals. is to disturb the word of God and to stop his work. The devil has two, two things to do. Two goals is to disturb the word of God and to stop his work. You know, when, when, <clears throat> when I, get, I get distracted it's really easy, my son's like, I don't get distracted. I, I, I do. <sighs> because... Sometimes I feel like when people get up and they leave early, and if you leave early, don't think I'm talking about you, but <laughs> when they get up and they leave early, I say, where are they going? I mean, where, where, what? there's something that I said. I'm, I'm thinking like this. And I see them get up. I say, where are they going? And then I see them come back. I say, okay, they went to the bathroom. <laughs> um, and I say, why are they leaving? And, and, and sometimes people leave because of the traffic. They leave because uh, it's, it's past one hour. Like there's no passion. Like it's just a Sunday routine thing. And the thing is, man, it's like a doctor visit, man. <clears throat> right about when they're about to call you, you get up and you leave. And then they call your name and you're not there anymore. And you got to make sure that you're there because you never know when God's going to be there. You never know what is there for you. <clears throat> And if you don't want it, the person next to you is going to get your blessing. So might as well just stay there and say, God, I'm here. I'm not on my time. I'm on your time. You woke me up this morning when you didn't have to wake me up, but you did, Father God. And I'm here because I need a word from you, Father God. Talk to me. Speak to me. Do something in my life. Hallelujah. Is there any hungry people in this house that you want the Lord to move and speak and do some crazy things in your life? That's what God is looking for, that you get that passion. Come on, look, look to the person next to you. See how they're sitting down. Does it look like they got the passion? They probably smile right now because you looked at them, but they're probably sitting there looking like they're just pretty sucking on the lemon. Look at them. Like once again, say, hey, get up, wake up. The Lord's been too good to you to be sitting there all upset, all mad. Get up. Praise the name of Jesus. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, my goodness. I don't understand how some of the... You're sitting there, just sitting, you're sitting like this. Nothing. People clapping. You're like, I don't understand how people can just be like that. You might not like where you're at, but you thank God you're not where you used to be. Amen. Praise God. Right there where you're at. Praise the name of Jesus. Cancer. Praise the name of Jesus. All hell breaking loose. Praise the name of Jesus. Divorce. Praise the name of Jesus. Anything that's coming up against you, praise the name of Jesus. Let the devil know that no matter what, no matter what you tell me or how I feel, I will never stop praising the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is crazy. And I'm just keeping it real. 
No, I'm keeping it real. Because some of you might not know, okay, what well, this is too much for me. It's too loud. Uh, I'm not used to this. I'm used to like, mm. <laughs> Some of you are going to leave and say, hijo, the pastor just glitty, 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 glitty. <laughs> I try not to scream too much, but I get excited because uh, it's like a passion that I have to see men and women of God lifting up their hands and praising the name of Jesus. Amen. I know it's hard to lift up your hands because you're not used to lifting up your hands. But when you realize that this is the biggest weapon you can use is lift up your hands and that's a sign of surrender. Some of you need to surrender that anger, surrender that drug, surrender that pornography. Some of you need to surrender everything. And all you gotta do is not say a word, just lift up your hands and the devil has to flee. The devil has to leave because you surrender everything to the Lord. And when you surrender to God, the devil can't stand that you lift up your hands. And better yet, why don't you just wave them like you just don't care. Hallelujah. And tell the devil, here I am. I'm still standing. I'm still worshiping. I'm still moving. I'm still here in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Oh, yeah. Woo. When you get discouraged, when you get discouraged and you lose your passion, this is what the Lord says. In Revelation chapter 2, we were just at earlier, in, vi in verse 5 and 6, it says this, remember. Can we put that on the screen again, Emerald? Revelation chapter 2, and that's in verse 5 and 6. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent and do the works you did at first. That means that in order for you to get your passion back, it's not by saying, Lord, give me that passion. God said, man, get back to work. Get back to what you used to be doing. Go back and do what I called you to do. But you don't understand, God. She's here and he said this and it's not going my way. I don't care. I'll put you there, not for them, for you. You need to work. You need to stay there. You need to keep on having that passion and serve me because you're not doing it unto men. You're doing it unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Repent. Some of us need to ask for forgiveness. Some of us today are going to separate yourselves from someone that is negative. So that negative person, if you're in this house and you call your friend the other negative friend and she don't answer, get the hint. She don't want to talk to you no more. Ah, oh, some of you don't want to clap because she's right next to you. It's okay. Clap, 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 clap like you just don't care. Clap so hard that the negativity will jump off of her and jump off of him and get out of here. <laughs> Some of you came at the right time because you were already getting dragged out. I didn't preach this word just to preach it because I didn't want to preach it to begin with. But God said, preach it. Even if it's one person in that place that feels like giving up, that feels like walking away, that feels like quitting, you tell them they came too far to quit now, to stand, because I never quit, God says. So I don't make no quitters. I don't make no whiners. I make nothing but winners. More than the conquerors are in this house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Repent and do the works you did at first. Ah, that's some good stuff. And the, Shake this out. Look at what it says. Look at what it says. Or else. Somebody tell your neighbor said, or else. All right. Look at your other neighbor and said, or else. Just to make sure everybody gets it. Or else I will come to you quickly. Like before the service is even over. And I will remove your candlestick from its place. Unless you repent. And I don't know, but back in the days... They didn't have no electricity. Very important for the Ephesians to stay connected because if they would have lost their passion and they would lose the light, the only light they had, 
no lighter, no flashlight, no candles, just Jesus. If he comes and he takes that away, you are left in the dark. And in the dark, you will fall. In the dark, you will fail. In the dark, it gives the enemy a reason to come in and say, look at them, they're in the dark. Let's go in there seven times more and destroy them completely. Has anyone ever been in the dark? Yes. All of us have been in the dark. And it's not because we just fell out of love with God or we lost it. No, we left it. We left the light. And it says here, I'll come quickly and I'll remove it. Because the thing is, is I do this in leadership. I put water in people's hands on the, or on the bow, put your hands in the water, take them off. The ripple effect, it'll be there for like less than a second and it'll disappear. That's how fast someone can be replaced. You're not irreplaceable. There's somebody better than me. I don't deserve to be here, but I have a passion to be here. So I'm not going to allow the devil to remove me from my position. Hey. And you were put in a position and some of you are allowing the devil to move you and you're like this. You're right at the edge and you're about to slip. But God brought you today to put you back in position and tell you, hold on. Hallelujah. Don't lose it. The first step, I'm almost done, in restoration for the Ephesian church was for them to remember. And I don't know if you remember the story of the prodigal son. The first step he had to do is to come to himself, to remember where he came from. Because the prodigal son left good stuff. He left his position he lost the passion that he had to be around his father. And he wanted what he wanted. Selfishness kicked in. I'm talking about how you lose your passion. Selfishness is one thing. And all of a sudden he leaves. If you know, don't know the story of the prodigal son. He leaves and he finds himself having everything. But losing everything. Because the devil will make it look good for you. Where you think you have it all. But if you lose your passion. You'll be like the church of Ephesians. You have all the works and you're doing good and God knows you love him, but you have done something. You left your first love for something else. What is your other love? What is your other God? What comes first? Is it Jesus? So here's the prodigal son. He leaves and he loses it all and now he's eating with the pigs. And he looks up and says, why am I eating with the pigs? Or like you said, some of you have been in darkness. Why am I in darkness when I serve a mighty God? Why am I in darkness eating it with the pigs when I have a father that owns it all? You know what? I come to a realization that I need to go back to my father's house and I need to repent. I need to repent and get back what the devil has taken away from me. Some of you need to go back into the enemy's camp and take back what the devil has taken from you because God called you. He called you for such a time as this. You got to come to your realization and you have to repent in the name of Jesus that's why I said you got to remember I remember when God came into my life you need to remember what God has done in your life discouragement people people talking about you people saying this you know how many people leave the church they leave the church because of someone else not because of the pastor eh, maybe sometimes I don't know why but I'm a, such a nice guy and then they go over there and they start hanging around with other little sheep that look like sheep. But if you look a little closer, they got little horns. Little billy goes, Mah, Mah. and all of a sudden they get along together and they start a, their own church. And now it's all God. Whatever. Still a bunch of billy goats. And all of a sudden, I've seen a lot of people that left the church and they come back because they come to a realization that where God put them, it's where God put them so they can grow and get rooted, not so they can get up and leave and go here, 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 like a little Easter bunny hopping from church to church. If you get your feelings hurt, just stay there. If you don't like it, just stay there. If you don't like the leader, you're not here for the leader. You're not here for the pastor. You're here for Jesus. And if you're here for the right reason, you'll get rooted and grounded and you won't lose it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of 2 Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 6. Here's Paul. I love Timothy. Paul is encouraging his spiritual son. 
Timothy. And he's telling him, Paul writes to, uh, writes to them an, an encouraging letter. And, and it says, therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. Whew, right there's a word right there. I remind you to stir up the gift that is in you. For the Spirit of God gave us, does not make us timid. It's a spirit of power, of authority. Church, I came to remind you that there's something in the inside of you. You are, I said it many times, you are a carrier of greatness. You got something in the inside of you that the devil can't stand, that he wants you to call, he wants to cause a miscarriage upon your life. But I'm here to tell you, hold on tight what the Lord has given you and know that you're not getting hit because of where you're at, but because of where you're going in the name of Jesus. So hold on tight to what the Lord has in store for you. Mm. The passionate person that you once were before your storm is still in you. The passionate person that you were before the storm is still in you. You still have that in you. You got to just really like, like I did in the bathroom, got to shake it off quick. Because if you don't shake it off, man, it'll tear you up. I learned as soon as something comes at me, I shake it off. Or I get a text about some, someone, I shake it off. Sometimes I just don't respond because if I respond, I'm going to go on and on and on and on. So if I don't respond to you, it's because I shook it off. And when I shake it off, you should shake it off yourself. And say, okay, forget that. Let's move on in the name of Jesus. Because the devil's a liar. You will get discouraged. You will get tired. What, Joel was saying that the gray hair is wisdom. This is ministry. These are hard people. These are people that will ah, tear you up, drain you. Give them your whole life and get up and walk out on you and nah, like that. And you got to stand strong still. And you got to come here, got to wipe your tears, and you got to preach the word because there's still some people in this house that are hungry and passionate for the things of the Lord. Don't worry about who left you. Worry about the ones that are still with you and preach like never before that they will get more wisdom and more knowledge and we learn from others on what not to do. See, because God brings you here every single service to speak to you. It's up to you to receive the word. So some of you are going to leave here and say, man, I know a lot of people that are negative. And maybe you're that person that said, man, I'm the negative person. Okay, well, God brought you here too so you could change your words. That you don't have to be negative. Be positive. Ephesians 5 says that everything that comes out of your mouth should be nothing but positive stuff. Nothing but blessings should come out of your mouth. Because you're a blessed somebody. What are you complaining about? Then y'all get together and have little coffee and fellowship and stuff. And then you start talking about everybody else. That's not fellowship. That's gossiping. When you go and you fellowship, you talk about the word of God. You talk about the goodness of God. You talk about how great God has been. Don't let the devil take you another route and now you're having cafecito till one or two in the morning and you leave that house all frustrated, full of pan de dulce and full of other stuff. Hmm. I'm serious, man. Don't lose it. <sighs> I'm already done. Jesus gives them a stern warning that he will come back and he will take it and remove it from them. Remove his presence. When their lamp stand was removed, they can, watch this, they can continue in the organization, but no longer as a true church. That's not what we want here, guys. It would be like the church of Ishkabab, where the glory had departed from them. We don't want the glory of the Lord departing this church, guys. We don't want the glory of the Lord departing your home, that you're just working and working and doing things for the kingdom of God. But there's just no God. You worship him with your, your lips, but your heart so far from him. We want to worship him with our lips and our heart will be, and people when they see us, say, man, that one has a passion. When I look at the children ministry, I know who has a passion. I was talking to Huran and Dorothy Huran and Yvette on Thursday. Uh, and I was talking to them and said, it's been two and a half months. Finally was able to receive in the church. Two months? Where have you been? Teaching. We're lacking teachers. Or teachers are falling off like crazy. I said, that's crazy. When we have a whole full church here that we can serve, but not everybody wants to serve. It's like the generation today. 
Not everybody wants to work anymore. They'll give you bonuses so you can work. We ain't going to give you no bonuses here. God has a bonus for you. It's called internal in heaven. If you do things for the Lord, God will open up the floodgates of heaven. And he will pour down a blessing upon your life that you will not be able to contain. We need some hungry, passionate people to be able to teach the future, to be able to help around the church, to be able to say, you know what? This is not Pastor Jimmy's house. This is your house, Father God. I'm going to take care of your house because I know that if I take care of your house, you'll take care of my house. Is there any passionate people in this house that say, here I am, Father God. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I like the scripture, Galatians 5, 7. It says this, you were running a good race. Why don't you look at your neighbor one more time. I know you don't like your neighbor no more, but look at your neighbor and say, say, neighbor, you were running a good race. Who cut in you to keep you from obeying the truth? Okay, wait for an answer because somebody needed to hear that. Now tell them this. Such persuasion, such persuasion, say it like that. Such persuasion does not come from the one who called you. It doesn't. Some of you are, it's not from God. I don't care what people say, it's not from God. When you're getting pushed away from, from the things of the Lord, from your passionate things. So I pray today that your passion will come back. There's so much more. To make a long story short, Nehemiah completed the walls. People will come and complain to him. They're coming from this way and this way. No matter what we do, they're all over the place. Nehemiah could have gone along with them and said, you know what? I know. What do we do? No, Nehemiah said, let me position the people well. Started positioning people well. It says that when, they, when some will sleep, some will stay awake. They kept on praising God with one hand, and you know the story, and fighting the devil with the other hand. But they never stopped praising, and they never stopped fighting. Don't ever come down. Don't let the devil take away your joy or your peace or mess with your family or mess with your ministry. You got to get up, repent, fight back in the name of Jesus and don't lose it because God gave it to you. Hold on tight. I know the baby's crying and crying and crying and you want to give it to somebody else. No, God gave it to you. Hold on to the baby and take care of what the Lord has given you. Come on, praise the name of Jesus here today. Don't you do me a favor come on i want you to just close your eyes right there where you're at if there's anyone in this house that say you know what pastor i'm here i lost my passion i lost the desire you see hum humble people humble people will have this humility that they don't care who sees them who hears they're here for the lord and if you're in this house and you say, you know what, Pastor? I don't even know if I'm going to heaven. But I don't even know my name is written on the book of life. But I want my name on the book of life. I want to have this passion. And if that's you, can you just stand where you're at? Just stand all over the place. If you say, you know what? I want this passion. I want this fire. I want to serve God with all my heart. Thank you for standing up. I want you to say this prayer. Come on, lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus. I'm holding on. I'm not losing it. I almost did. But thank you for waking me up this morning. Through the storm. Through it all. I'm still here. But I need you more than ever, Father. I want to feel what I felt when you first came to my life. When I was lost. When I was down. When I was tired. You never told me no. You came to my rescue. You lifted me up. Come on, talk to him. You lifted me up. You turned my life around. Oh, some of you are remembering right now. You turned my life around. You set my feet on solid ground. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. So forgive me, Father, for complaining. Forgive me, Father, for making excuses. I accept you, Father, as my Lord and personal Savior. 
I receive you with all my heart. I want that passion back, Father God. I know you died on the cross for me, Father. Now that's a sacrifice. But I also know that on the third day, you rose again. And here I am. I rose today. I stood today. I ask you that you come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Jesus, put my name on the book of life. Today is a new day. I leave here full of grace, full of your power, full of wisdom, full of knowledge and understanding. Have your way today. Amen and amen. Come on, somebody give it to the Lord. Give it up to Jesus.